Hello again and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing a very fun project that I am very excited for. We are going to be recreating the mom's apron item from Animal Crossing New Horizons for the first anniversary. Now I missed the first anniversary by a week or so, but that's okay. Um, and I've been wanting to make this for quite a while, but I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to do so. Now I'm not gonna be recreating this exactly. I'm actually going to be turning the apron into a pinafore style dress to make it a little more wearable and a little more fashionable. I'm going to be using linen for the first time, so let's hope that doesn't go disastrously. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe. And tell me what your favorite piece of clothing in Animal Crossing is. I really like all of the mom's aprons. This is just the one that I thought would be the most fun to recreate. And I use them in outfits quite often. And let's get started. Alrighty, so this is the dress that I'm going to be basing the top off of. This one is a pleated skirt, but I think I'm doing a gathered skirt just because pleats are annoying. It is... I believe it's vintage, um, it's Laura Ashley, and it's, it's a bit big for me, quite a bit big for me. I'm going to be tracing it without the seam allowance, so that will take it in a little bit without altering the shape too much. It's already been taken in once by whoever owned it previously. I thrifted this and was very excited to figure out it was Laura Ashley after the fact, but I like how it lays across the chest, I like the height. I might also do it without seam allowance because it is a little high. It digs into my armpits a little bit. So this is the one that we're gonna work off of. So that first step was tracing out all of the pieces of this original bodice that I am basing it off of. And I did find out that it is indeed vintage based on the tag. It's from the early 90s-ish. Once that was done and I had made pattern pieces, I used those pieces to cut out my fabric. I cut these very carefully since it was the first time I had ever worked with linen. I wanted to make sure they were staying on grain line as much as possible. Then I cut out another center front piece out of interfacing to add some stability to my embroidery. And that gets ironed on to a piece that I cut bigger than I needed so that it would fit in my embroidery hoop without any trouble. And here that is going in the hoop. I wish I had made this piece a little wider. It was a little bit of a tight fit to get it stable, but it worked out fine. And here's the pattern I made. To transfer the pattern that I made, I'm just doing a simple back stitch all around my entire design. And I'm doing this because it creates a nice little perforation in that paper, which I can then tear it away. It does make your needles a lot duller though, so that's something you should be warned about. And for the stems, I am just going ahead and doing my stem stitch And I'm also doing the same thing with the leaves, which are little daisy stitches. And then here you can see me very carefully tearing that away. Once it was all torn away, I got right to work filling it in. And I'm just filling it in with some satin stitches. Alrighty, here is an embroidery update. I'm currently working on the last two little feet of this baby duckling. Then I have to do the flowers and their eyes. I didn't film a lot of this because there wasn't a good place for me to do it where the camera wasn't in the way and I wasn't like uncomfortably crouched over and hurting my back. 
So I just decided not to film it. I'm doing mostly satin stitches for all the duckies. Their eyes are gonna be French knots. This is a stem stitch. I think the petals, the petals, I think the leaves are called daisy stitches, daisy, something like that. Um, the stems are stem stitches. And these are gonna be satin stitches towards the middle with three little French knots as the centers. So once this is done, we can cut it out to the correct shape and start sewing that bodice together. And I also cut out some two long strips for the straps and also one for the waistband. Then the entire bodice can get pinned together. And I'm just using the edge of my machine foot as my seam allowance, as I like to do. And for these, the straps and the waistband, I didn't even bother pinning them. This is the waistband and here are the straps. Okay, so here's where we are. Currently it meets with quite a bit of room in the back, which is good because that is where I want, I want it to overlap so I can have buttons. And yeah, it's not perfect. As you can see, it's pinned in one singular place. I have a lot of extra room under here that I need to take out. So I'm going to flip this inside out and then take that in a little bit, kind of. I'm gonna pin it on myself so it's shaped perfectly to my body. And then we can pin the straps and start on the skirt. Okay, so it's still not perfect. There's a little bit of weirdness right here, but I like it for what it is. It's not fitting super great because it'll fit better with the ties, which will cinch the waist a little better. But now I'm going to, I think I'm going to put the straps just to the side of this seam. So I will pin that in place and I, can, I have to do it with two hands. So I have to pin the back off camera and then we can get the lining attached. I'm just making sure they're even, and then I'm gonna pin on the lining. And that's just getting stitched on with that same type of stitch. And here it is. And then for the hem, I just simply trimmed off the fluffy bits on the selvage and turned that selvage up once since it's a pre-finished edge. And then I'm just doing a nice simple straight stitch along that edge. And then we can gather the skirt down. So I am just gathering it with a single line of running stitches, which is not best practice, but it is lazy practice and I am lazy. 
And once that is done, I am pinning it, leaving the first inch or so with no gathers, making sure there's enough space for me to put in my button placket, and then carefully arranging the other gathers throughout the skirt. And that just gets stitched on the same way. Would not advise sewing over your pins, but I'm lazy. So, do as I say, not as I do. And once that is done, the lining got folded over to cover the seam between the skirt and the bodice. And that just got whip stitched on. This doesn't need to be structural, so I am not doing the most secure stitches, just doing whatever's easiest. And then this button placket I made, which is basically just a strip of fabric with some interfacing attached to it, gets added onto the back of my skirt. Once that is done, I flipped it over so that it was on the inside of the dress, and I am finishing it with the same whip stitches that I did the bodice. And now we can figure out button placement. Decided I wanted three above the waist tie and a few more below. So I'm just figuring out how many I will need using my handy dandy button tool, which is so fancy, and making sure they are all perfectly even and marking that onto my fabric. You can barely see it, but it was enough for me to see it in person and that's all that matters. And then my favorite tool, the buttonhole stitch. This makes my life so easy. This is so much easier than hand stitching buttonholes. Why don't all machines have this? It's literally ridiculous. And then I am pinning that waist tie on to the front half of the dress. It'll stop being stitched on around my armpits and the rest will hang free so I can tie it And then that got stitched on. This is kind of a funky stitching method since I'm top stitching it. I kind of just went over the bodice as normal. And then when I have to finish the ends that are loose, it kind of requires some finagling around that machine. And then I am using a piece of tape to mark how wide I want my back seam to be, using that as a guide as I stitch that up.
And then the rest of the back on the other side that does not have a pocket is getting whip stitched down. I just folded it over twice, whip stitched it. I did this by eye, it's not super even, but it'll do. And then the back seam, it got trimmed, turned under, and is being filled down by hand. And finally, for the last step, we sewed on our buttons, and that was it. Alrighty, so here is the final look. I'm super happy with this. I love the flow that linen has, and I really want to work with it a lot more often. Um, I really love how my embroidery came out. It looks great. My biggest issue with it is the waist tie is a little shorter than I think it should be. I think I need to add some extensions to it. Right now it can only be tied in a knot and I really wish it was able to be tied in a bow, but I think that's an easy fix. Yeah, I'm super happy with this. Um, keep an eye out for more linen coming because I love this fabric. It's amazing. It's so nice, it has such a nice weight, and it's just beautiful. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite Animal Crossing item is and the name of your island because I don't really like mine. I'm considering restarting, but we'll see. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you would like to see more content from me. I have some fun things coming up that I think you'll really be excited about. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, bye!